Hi, it's ER. I'm going to review your portfolio for college admission. I'll start by talking about your entire portfolio overall, and then I'm going to go through and critique each piece individually. What really I think is wonderful about your portfolio is your engagement with such a diverse range of different types of narratives. I look at your portfolio and you have a lot of pieces which talk about your own personal narratives, but also you talk about more current events. For example, you have a piece about sexual harassment, a piece that's about the spiritual eye of the artist, and there are multiple pieces that talk about Peruvian culture. You have this poster about ceviche. I think that's just wonderful that you are so incredibly versatile in those areas. And I do see that in your portfolio, you are drawing from life, but you also, I think, are extremely imaginative. And I think it's pretty clear looking at especially the paintings that you definitely have the technical skills to back that up. That's a really wonderful combination. You have so many different types of media represented in your portfolio, lots of paintings, a mural, digital media. You have several pieces that incorporate topography. You've got some sketches to show a little bit about your process. You've got 3D pieces, some standalone sculptures, and also a piece which is wearable. And I would also say style-wise, there's a very broad range. You have some pieces that are very realistic, hyper detailed, but then you also have illustrations that are a lot more graphic in style and then everything in between. So I would say overall, you have so much going for you in the portfolio. You definitely have the diversity nailed in terms of medium and in terms of narrative. You had asked me a couple of questions about the order of your portfolio. I would say what you want to try to do with the order is you don't want to clump together images that are very similar. For example, your first five images are all these portrait paintings. Each one is very different, but there is a similarity in terms of the way that they look. You've also clumped together a lot of your pieces that have text involved. So for example, these two posters, you have this book that you illustrated. You wanna to try to mix it up a little bit because I think what happens is when somebody's reviewing a portfolio, if they see five images in a row that are very similar, they'll start to look very much the same. And so if you break it up a lot more, and let's say you start with a painting and then you go to one of the posters and then you lead into a 3D piece, that I think can really accentuate the diversity of your portfolio. You had asked me about whether image number 16 and 17 need detail shops. I would say no. I think that the two images that you have are sufficient. And I don't get the feeling looking at the photos you have now that a detail shot would really reveal anything new in terms of experiencing the piece. So I would just keep those photos. I think those two photos are excellent. I think they really show the exterior of the piece. They let you wander on the interior. So you're doing great in terms of the presentation of that piece. I am guessing in the statement that you were talking about image number 21 from the description, you were asking about the presentation of that piece because it is a piece that is to be worn, that also moves. And I think for the most part, it's pretty good. The thing that I would do, the photo in the lower right hand corner, I think looks very flat because there's no shadow. I really like the photo in the lower left hand corner because we see this very dramatic shadow of the butterfly wings. And then also that I think pushes the translucency of the material as well. It looks a lot more three-dimensional. I don't think you need the detail shot in the upper right hand corner. I don't feel that anything really dramatically new is being expressed there that I can't understand from the other photos. And certainly you want the photo of the person actually wearing it, but there are two things I would change. The first thing is, I would show the entire figure. Don't crop the legs off because I think in terms of scale, when you can see an entire figure wearing something which is this large, it makes more sense in terms of proportions. And then the second thing is I would have your model stand in front of a perfectly white background.
you can get a sheet of paper, hang it on the wall, have it roll down onto the floor, so that way you don't get that ugly horizon line where the floor meets the wall. This imagery of the person in this flower garden actually takes away from the butterfly wings because I find myself looking at that photo, I start spending a lot of time looking at the flowers in the background, the really bright yellows, and then all of a sudden, I'm not really looking at the piece so much. So just shoot another photograph of that. And what you can do with the person is have them wear something really plain. Like I think something that would be good is if you had the person maybe wearing a black turtleneck, black pants, maybe black socks, something that's just really, really plain. So that way the colors of the wings really leap off the page a lot better. You'd also ask a question about the length of your artwork descriptions. I would say that they're a little bit on the long side. The only reason I say that is because you have to imagine if you're an admissions officer and you're reviewing hundreds of portfolios and the descriptions start to get really long, I bet you anything they're not reading every single one beginning to end. I would guess that somebody who sees a description of the length that you're writing, they're probably going to skim. Try to shorten them to about two or three sentences. And that I think is much more likely that the entire sentence is going to be read because otherwise if it's too long, it's like you risk people not even reading it, which of course is not very helpful in terms of the process. The format of how you present images number 9, 10, 11, 12, and also image number seven. Image number seven is a mural and yet the way that it's presented, it almost looks like a digital illustration to me. We wanna see the space. We wanna see how big the mural is in relation to the floor. You could even have somebody in the photo so that way we have a better sense of scale or you could do something like put a chair in the scene. I think that would really help because I was actually sort of confused when I read the artwork description where you said it was a mural and to me the image didn't look like a mural at all. It seems like a design for your mural. It doesn't look like the actual mural itself. The book I think I'm super confused about in images 10, 11, and 12 because you have these designs that go off the book. And I couldn't tell if those are cut pieces of paper in the book that go off the edge, or if you just added those designs outside the book digitally to make the slide more interesting. It's really confusing. I also think it's not a good idea to have green as a background for that book, because especially in image number 12, most of that spread is green, and so the image just gets swallowed by that green background. Just put a white background, so that way we can really see things very clearly, because at least in image 10 and 11, that green background, I think, really affects how we interpret the colors on the page. Like that red has such a different effect against a green background versus if the red was against a white background. So definitely rethink that. I also think it's a little strange that in image number nine, you have like a stack of the books. And that's a little funny because I feel like when I saw that, I thought it was a brochure or a bunch of CD covers that someone was gonna hand out. I think if you wanna show that it's a book, just show one of the book. Don't show multiples because then we start not looking at it as a book, it starts to become something else. Your composition, I think, fluctuates. When I look at your portfolio, you have a couple pieces where the composition is super dynamic and you have lots of really good decisions going on. Like I would say number 13, I think has a really beautiful composition. I can see in some of these paintings, like image number three, which is extraordinarily active. But in a lot of your paintings, you tend to take the portraits and stick the face right dead center. And I think what's happening is that that's becoming a recurring pattern in your compositions. And a similar thing happens in image number eight. Try to do some paintings where you purposefully place the head in a different area. Because I think for a lot of people, when they're doing a portrait, 
the default location to put the face is in the middle because it makes it the most visible. And for a portrait, usually people want the face to be very prominent. But the thing is, when you start doing that over and over again, it makes me think that it's not a deliberate choice. And rather, it's just because you weren't thinking through the composition. I don't know if you do thumbnail sketches for your paintings, but if you don't, I really recommend that you do that because thumbnail sketches are great because you can catch those compositional problems early on before you've invested many, many hours working on a painting. So I would make sure that you turn that into a habit I think with your portraits, what you can work on is getting a better sense of the structure of the skull. You have a couple pieces like number two and number four, where it seems like you're too concerned with the surface of the face. You get too involved with the facial features, the eyes, nose, and the mouth, and yet things like the cheekbone and the jawbone feel very flat. I would say image number three probably has the most convincing sense of skeletal structure, but I think it might be good for you to do some anatomical studies so that you understand structurally what's going on in there in terms of the skeleton and also the musculature. I think you do need some more drawings because you have this one charcoal drawing done from life, which is great, that's image number six. But when I go through the rest of your portfolio, that's really sort of it as far as drawings go. And I can tell you have a lot of skill in the other areas, but I feel like the amount of drawing you have, it's pretty sparse. And I really think that you need to have three other images that are really full out substantial drawings. I think that you could probably do some in charcoal, you might even try working with chalk pastel or oil pastel, being somebody who I think does love color so much, but beef up that part of your portfolio because I do feel right now that the digital media and the painting, it's so dominant that we don't really get a good sense of your hand. The area that you really need to work on and to refine to bring it to a more sophisticated level would be in terms of color. It's very clear to me, looking at your portfolio, that you love color. You love bold, bright, saturated colors. And I can see that joy for that part of the process, which is wonderful. A lot of your colors are too bright to the point that they're almost canceling each other out. You need to mix much more. I don't know if you're mixing with a palette knife or if you mix with your brushes, but if you mix with your brushes, I would switch to mixing with a palette knife because a palette knife will get you to mix more aggressively and it also puts you in a different mindset because you're thinking less about the application of the paint and more about the mixing of the paint because a lot of the colors you have, they feel like they're either straight out of the tube or they're very literal. Number one, all of the water is blue. There aren't really any variations in there. But if you look at an ocean, you'll see that there are sections that are almost a dark maroon color. Sometimes you see tints of green, little bits of brown, and also bits of purple. Like image number eight, I don't feel like there's any color in there except for blue. And so that starts to feel just like a value study where it's like it's dark blue and medium blue and light blue. And you don't have blues that have any bit of a tint. This piece, I think, really shows off your immense technical skill. There is a crazy amount of detail in this painting, and you don't get results like this unless you have an amazing work ethic and extraordinary amount of patience. So I really respect that so much about this piece. But my problem with it is I just don't feel that you're doing very much in terms of manipulating the photo reference and really showing a personal statement, it really does feel very much like a copy of a photo. Some of the other images, I can tell that maybe you use some photo reference, but the thing is you end up manipulating the colors or the imagery enough that I don't see the photo so visibly. Like I look at this painting and I just think about a photo that looks just like this. And you talk about how it's your sister coming up for air, she's coming to the swimming pool. It does have very much of a snapshot feeling to it. You might keep this piece as 
an example of your technical ability, but I think as far as creativity, it doesn't really have a lot of your voice in it, at least in the way that I think a lot of your other pieces do. So th this piece you could keep, but I also think it'd be better to have a piece that maybe exhibits this level of skill, but also has something to say, something that's a lot more unique. This painting I'm really interested in because of the engagement with the porcelain character in the painting, the cracking. That's all very interesting. I don't like the composition though and the flatness of the background is not helping you either. This is a painting that I actually recommend that you work on some more. There are some pieces I'm going to tell you, oh, just get rid of it. This piece just needs more work you try to really activate the background. So you have four birds in the piece, and I love the birds. Picture if you added 10 more birds and put the birds behind the figure and have some of the birds going off the page, have some of them cropped going to the corner, and also make the birds all different sizes. Because if you have like a really big bird, let's say on the empty area on the right-hand side, and then you have some birds that are behind the figure, maybe, coming out from behind the hair, and then you have some in the distance that are very, very small. That's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna show a sense of depth, and also it's gonna activate that space in the background. The space in the background, it very much feels like a backdrop, almost like you're on a stage and there's a curtain behind you. So I really have trouble getting past the figure. You're not really engaging with that. It is very dead center, but my feeling is that if you really push it with the birds and really give us a reason to go off the edges and corners of the page, you probably will be able to use this composition. What I would recommend with the porcelain cracking is you need to make it much more visible because before I read your statement, I actually didn't even really notice the porcelain cracks. I mean, maybe if I'd spent more time, I could have, but it wasn't that visible. And I feel like from the way that you're talking about it, that is a pretty critical part of this piece. So I think I would go back in and maybe think about, especially that gigantic hole, maybe making that much, much more dramatic. I think that would really help you quite a bit. And I actually think you could add more of the flowers. It's, it's same thing with the birds. Like the birds are so wonderful. There's so few of them. And also the flowers feel so isolated to just the sides of the body. Like what if you had a gigantic bush of roses that were growing behind her? I think the key thing is you just have to put some birds and flowers behind the figure. Everything is in front. And so that's what's making that space in the background feel so flat. I also think it's very awkward that she has no nipples. I think sometimes people don't want to add certain parts of the body because they don't want it to be a distraction. But actually what ends up happening is when you remove parts of the body that people expect to see, it becomes more of a distraction. So I would either paint the breasts so that they go off the page, which actually I think proportionally speaking might work better, or I would actually just paint the nipples in because I think it's a little bit too um, awkward the way it is without the nipples. This piece I'm very interested in. It's definitely one of your most dynamic compositions. For one thing, I love the engagement of the hands, but also the twist of the head is really good because a lot of your other pieces, they're these straight on portraits or straight on profiles. And so having this point of view, I think is really useful. I think what I would try to do is make the flowers more dramatic because the flowers to me right now, they feel almost, especially on the top of the head, they almost feel like a shower cap or something. I feel like the big yellow flower, you need like five other flowers that are like that one, that are dramatic enough, that are really making a statement. And I would get more colors in because that yellow flower to me, you almost lose it because the background is a super bright saturated yellow. And so that yellow flower almost can't compete. So for example, if you had a flower that was a really deep, dark purple, that would actually work really well with the light yellow background because purple is a complementary color of yellow. You could definitely do something like that. Now, in terms of the subject matter, because you talk about the subject of sexual harassment leading to a forced loss of innocence in the life of a woman, and you talk about how flowers are associated with virginity and symbolize 
intimacy. And so it's like the hands are coming out of nowhere to pick the flowers out of the woman's hair without her permission. If I hadn't read the description, I would never have known that this was the case. I don't get the feeling that the hands are violating the woman. It almost feels like they're helping her. It looks like somebody who is getting ready for a fancy event and so they're putting flowers in their hair. It almost feels like these are her bridesmaids and they're assisting her. And so I think if you really want to show that violation of the flowers, I think probably you need to make those hands more menacing. I feel like the hands, they look very gentle. I don't think that they seem like a threat to the figure. And also the facial expression of the woman, she seems so placid and almost apathetic in a way. I don't know exactly what you have in mind, but I feel like the, the lack of emotion isn't really helping drive the idea home very much. I also think what you want to consider is that, at least in a lot of cultures, flowers are oftentimes interpreted as a symbol of female genitalia. I don't know if that's something you considered or if it's something you want to think about, but I think it's really hard to have an image with symbols like flowers about sexual harassment and not have us make that connection. So you either have to embrace that theme or maybe do something totally different so that you don't invite that association if that's not what you're intending. I would just say the overall mood of the piece is so joyful and so fun that it just doesn't match the subject matter for me. This piece I think is interesting, but I think it's a little bit too vague and it does feel a lot like a collage. I feel like the four birds, they look like they were painted on a sheet of paper and then cut out and then just stuck on the female figure. And then it's very strange that the female figure's shoulder on the left-hand side isn't really present. And it sort of suffers from the same thing as this portrait in that, again, it has this very flat backdrop of blue, but also there's this minor glow that's coming around the figure and the birds, which I also think is very distracting. I also think composition-wise, not your best composition. Again, dead center, frontal portrait, and also the birds being perfectly lined up. The part of the painting where I think you do have a lot of potential is actually this area where the bird feathers look like they're sort of disintegrating, but you need to make that much more dramatic and more incremental because I'm not so sure I'm totally convinced that's what it's supposed to be because the feathers do look so separate from the feathers that are on the wing. That's assuming that I'm reading it correctly. And also I think color wise, the color is really isolated. Like all the reds and the peaches are in the female figure. All of the blues are in the background and in the birds. And then where you do have orange and yellow in the birds, it's pretty subdued. So for example, one way you could get this to work together better is if you say, for example, had really light blue highlights on the side of her face that would bring us to that background, maybe have some navy blue shadows in her hair. Same thing with the birds, like maybe you do like a, a light a lizard and crimson glaze over that. We do have a tutorial here, which is introduction to oil painting techniques. And in this tutorial, I do talk about how to do glazing, which is where you put transparent paint over opaque paint. And I definitely think that this painting could do something like that. But mostly, again, it's your background, like the top left-hand corner, the lower left-hand corner, there's just nothing happening back there. I wish that you would just fill that whole upper left and lower left side just with way more birds, way more feathers. Just get out of the rigidity of the composition. It's just a little bit too static right now. This portrait, I think, has potential. I would say work on this piece more because there are some things that I think could work, but right now it's the same problem. You have a profile view, you have a flat black background. We're not really engaging beyond the figure because the thing about paintings is you really have to think about putting them in a context. When you don't put things in a context, it really flattens the space very tremendously. So for example, you have this butterfly in the flower 
And really the butterfly and the flower is the only thing that really distinguishes this portrait as being just a run of the mill generic portrait. And so what if you made the butterfly gigantic, so big that it goes off the page? What if you add 30 butterflies and there's some in front of you, some behind you? And I do feel like the flower, it's so smushed that I just don't even feel like it's there. Also, it's a similar thing where the hand is holding the flower and if the hand to me looks like it was cut out and collaged and just glued on top of that flower, what I'd recommend you do is take a reference photo of your hand actually holding a real flower and then you'll be able to figure out how that hand really interacts because I know from the arrangement that the hand is supposed to be holding the flower but the thing is they don't actually feel like they're touching each other and then same thing with the blue the blue is blue the peach is peach you got to get outside of that start using some more unusual colors and this is a tutorial that we have on how to draw a still life. And I think this would help you a lot, number one, as another drawing technique, but also learning how to put more unusual colors. Like just because you're painting something that's orange, doesn't mean you can only use orange. In fact, a lot of times you can get blue into an orange object and make it very beautiful. So see if you can try to work with that some more. And then this is another good one with the same technique. And I actually do talk about skeletal structures. I do talk about different landmarks on the face to look at. So I think that would be a really good reference for you. This I think is a good piece just in terms of being a life drawing piece. I don't know if you're gonna be able to have access to nude models in the classroom again, but I would say if you do, you wanna be more conscious of the joints in the figure. So for example, you wanna look at the kneecaps, the elbows, the collarbones, the ankle bones, because you're very good at drawing the softer, fleshier parts, like the breasts on the female on the right-hand side, I think have a beautiful weight to them. Those really, I think, feel so palpable. But then when I get down to the kneecaps, the kneecaps are not very well defined and they seem too small. So really try to bulk up the structure of that. Like I really wanna get a feeling that the kneecaps are very bony and very rigid because the rest of the figures are very soft, but you don't want everything to look exactly like that. Okay, so this mural, you're gonna to have to take a new photo of it. So I'm not so sure I feel like I can really critique it very well because I don't really feel like I'm seeing an accurate representation of it. I think what I would say is I wish that there were some bigger, bolder shapes because there's a lot of little shapes. There's like a lot of the green that's coming down. There's a blue coral-like shape in the background, but I really like these two gigantic magenta flowers. And I wish there were like four more very big shapes like that. It feels like there's too many little pieces to this mural, but it could be different depending on how it actually sits on the wall. But just think about having some bigger, bolder shapes and trying to be, again, less separate about your colors. Like there's no reason some of that magenta in the flower can't leak into those leaves in the background. This I think is not one of your better pieces. I think compositionally it's pretty weak. The anatomy on the figure I think is very strange. A lot of the proportions I think are really off. And also I feel like your interpretation of the background with this person in the water, it feels very fake. So this piece I would take out of your portfolio. This piece we talked about some of the format issues. I would say taking a look at the piece, I'd really recommend that you do more research because a lot of the plants that I'm looking at here, they have a very generic quality. And the thing is, this piece is very specific about the location. You talk about how it's an Amazon warrior, it's the Amazon Pink River Dolphin. And so I would imagine that in the Amazon, there's all types of incredible plant life and animals. And I'm looking at this and I feel like this is the same generic fern that you could see anywhere. And so you really want to do your research, look up plants in the Amazon. And I would say this figure, it's the pink dolphin, which has turned into the human. I feel like the face is really distracting. And actually this might be better off if it's a back view of the figure 
and then maybe they're looking off into the distance because the rest of it is fine. The gesture of the hands are quite good. I think the chest is well articulated. I would like to see more in the ocean. I feel like the oceans would have more ripples, but that face, I think it's a little bit too silly looking for what you're describing. And so I would either make it a different view where the face isn't so dominant or do a back view altogether. This, I think, is a really excellent poster. I think that there's so many parts to it. I think it's beautifully done. The only problem I have with it is that it's really low in contrast. So I don't know if you're able to go back in and work on this, but I feel like if the top upper right-hand corner was like black, like really, really dark, and then slowly gradated towards the lower left-hand corner, get a little bit lighter, then this would really pop. Because the word espinosorio, sorry, I can't pronounce that very well, but if you make that upper right-hand corner black, the black will be behind S-A-U-R-I-O, and that will help that really pop a lot more. Because there's good stuff in here, I just feel like, if I were to take this image and put it into Photoshop and I made it black and white, it would be pretty gray. So change the contrast. This piece I think is okay. I don't really like that the plate is not very visible. And also things just feel too small. I feel like I would either add way more stuff, like the cilantro. I think it'd be so fun if the top left-hand corner was just a huge bunch of cilantro, if you had multiple limes, if you had pieces of chopped onion to just fill it in. So I would say this is a piece I'd work on more. It's very close. It's like 75% there. If you just triple the quantity of the ingredients around it, make it richer, make it fuller. And you might even think about something like the cilantro maybe going behind the letters of ceviche. Maybe if you make ceviche out of black, it'll stand out a little bit better because your watercolor technique is incredible. I mean, that area that's on the plate, I mean, you can feel the texture I think beautiful techniques. It's just extraordinary. So it's really the stuff that's around the plate that needs more work. Keep the plate as it is, but you've got to really cut back on this white background because it's just so bare looking that it makes it hard to really appreciate the lusciousness of the image. This is terrific. The only thing I would say for this planning piece, I would not use the image at the bottom. I think the image at the bottom is nowhere near as exciting as what's happening in the sketchbook image above. So I would actually take a photo of the sketchbook spread so that we can see the entire right hand page because that is a beautiful sketchbook spread. I just love that. The bottom image, not so much. I don't feel like it's as well done. I don't feel like I see your sketching so much. And then these two pieces are just exquisite, really, really beautifully done. They have so much personality to them. I think they are definitely contemporary subjects, but they also talk about um, the capital of Peru. And so there's a cultural context for these pieces. These are fantastic. If you were to do anything to these, maybe another pass of detail, because I love these decorative elements. They're just beautiful, but I really think you could actually put way more details, like just get a teeny, teeny, tiny brush. It's not a huge difference. And certainly if you don't have time, you probably can get away with not doing it because they're exquisite pieces on their own. I'm just thinking if you want to take it to the next level, that might be something to consider. This I don't think is one of your better pieces. I think that it's a wonderful subject. This piece from Peruvian mythology, I think is just beautiful. But the thing is, I think that the architecture of the towns that you've drawn at the bottom, they just look like blocks to me. Like I don't really get the feeling that that's really a population in the city. And so I feel like you need to draw more specifically what's going on down there. And the person is sort of awkwardly situated because I can't tell if there's like a hole in the mountain and they're sitting in it, or if these folds coming down are part of a dress. And the background with the moon and the star is really generic. I mean, that's the same moon and stars that you see all over the place. And color wise, I don't think a huge amount is going on in here. I think that you could definitely do more with that. This is a tutorial that we have, which shows you how to illustrate a story from history. And so given that 
your piece is very much about contemporary life, you might want to look at this tutorial and see how Alex researches his story and how he gets reference images. Because for an image like this, obviously you can't get somebody to pose for you. You have to get reference images, you have to get stuff that represents the city. But I think watching that tutorial might really help you start to put some of that together. This piece, I like the image. I think the image has some beautiful stuff, especially the, the, I guess it's almost like a spider's web that's in the background. I actually think you could do more with that. Like I think you could add many more details, like really fill it in. Because the thing is a lot of your work is so beautiful and it's just about adding a little bit more. It's like a lot of these pieces, they're like 80% there. They just need another touch. But my biggest problem with this piece is I really don't like the text. I think the text, it just looks stuck on. It seems like that typical run of the mill Times New Roman. And I feel like you could pick a much better font that didn't feel so sterile because there definitely, I think in this piece is a dark moodiness to this piece that I think is really great, but that just isn't reflected in the choice of the font and also the placement of the font. Like I think it'd be really interesting because you have this gigantic web. Like what if you have the web interweaving through the text? And I don't even know that you should necessarily use typed text. I actually think that maybe handwritten text would be a lot better, especially if you decide that you do want it to interact with the spider's web. So this piece, I think it has a lot of potential and I could use more diversity in terms of the color of the bird as well, because because that yellow, again, a little bit boring. If you got in some purple shades of shadows, those could be very, very beautiful. This I also don't think is one of your better pieces. I feel like color-wise, the orange and the greens really fight against each other. And I find myself not really appreciating the line work in this piece so much. I also feel like I don't really understand what the imagery is supposed to be. I don't know Fleetwood Mac, but I think you should assume that whoever looks at this may not know Fleetwood Mac, even though some people will. And I'm just confused because I can't tell, is this a fantasy illustration? But then the thing is I look at the figure and they're wearing these 3D glasses. And I guess when I read the statement, it makes sense, but I don't think I should have to read a statement to figure out what your piece is about. So this piece I'd get rid of. This piece is wonderful absolutely outstanding, really ambitious. I can imagine the construction must have been a crazy amount of work. I actually feel like I'd love to see more of that magenta though. I feel like the magenta, there's so little of it that it's this wonderful part of the piece, but we feel hungry for more. I don't know if you still have access to this, but I think it'd be really great to maybe do a glaze of magenta over the lower sections of the butterfly, just a touch because I feel like it's so close but it needs just a little bit more. And then of course you need to reformat the images. Now for drawing, I think you really should think about charcoal drawing. Charcoal drawing that's more rigorous, that's more painterly. And we also have this tutorial, which is an animation project using charcoal. And so that could be a way to work in time-based media into your portfolio. It's definitely not required. I'm just thinking about another way to do that because it is so clear to me when I look at your portfolio, you are such an ambitious worker. You have an amazing work ethic and concentration, and you're obviously very open and willing to try so many different things. And a lot of your pieces are so close. It's like you just have to bring them to that extra mile. And I know a lot of people are very afraid to do that because they don't want to ruin what's already working well with their pieces. But your pieces are far enough along that I don't think that's going to happen to you. I feel like they're only going to improve. So just think about pumping up those aspects of the piece and then I think you'll really be able to bring your pieces to a full resolve.